All right, so take two on my video here. We're going to look at applying linear relationships and transform. We're still in that same unit of applying linear relationships. We're going to look at transformations. Now, you were supposed to start on this yesterday, but um, I know that sometimes things get lost when I'm out, and I'm not sure if you guys got handouts or not, so I'm going to cover some of the things that were on the handout. Some of this stuff is in the video, but this is also an extension of the video that I posted yesterday, and it's a few more examples. So please make sure that you are understanding this. If you have any questions, you can join me at 2 for a Google Meetup. So recall that when f of x is transformed by f of x, sorry, I had to fix a quick typo. Okay, that's just supposed to be d. So recall that when f of x is transformed by f of x plus d, the linear function shifts or is translated. Now think about a linear function. We've got this graph here. We can either shift it left and right. When I'm talking about translations, that's sliding. We're not expanding. We're not dilating. Uh, we're not rotating. A translation is just a slide. So we can either slide left or right, or we can slide up or down. So the main things that I want you to learn today is when you're adding outside or subtracting outside of the function notation, outside of the f of x, that that is a vertical translation. So it shifts or is translated vertically. So it's going to take that parent function, which passes through the origin, and it's going to shift it up, or it's going to shift it down. That's a vertical translation. So um, if I add, then that's kind of easy to see that it's going to shift it up. And if we subtract, that's going to shift it down. So let's think about this. I've got the parent function over here, passes through the origin. Pretend that passes perfectly through the origin. So if I do f of x plus 3, that's going to shift it up 1, 2, 3 units, and it's going to still have the same slope, just a different y-intercept. And if I do f of x, take away 2, that's going to shift it down 2 units. So still, again, the same slope, parallel lines have the same slope, never do they meet, but it shifts it down. All right, so now describe the relationship between the function and the parent function and graph and label. So let's first begin by graphing the parent function. We know it passes through the origin, so it's here at 0, 0. It has a slope of 1, so it's going up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and it goes down 1. Um, recall that the parent function is just f of x equals x. The slope is 1 plus 0 if we wanted to put it there, or we can just keep it simplified as f of x plus 1. Just wanted to make sure we cover that one more time. It's very important to understand what the parent function is. Okay, so let's put this line on here, connect our points. I'm using Christmas collars in the wrong season, y'all. All right, so put my arrows on the end. Now we're going to do f of x minus 5. So that's a translation. We're going to shift it down 5 units. Each point gets shifted down 5 units, down 5 units, down 5 units. And after a while, you start to see, okay, the slope's still the same, going up 1 over 1. As each point moves down 5, it's a constant rate of change. So, of course, my slope is going to stay the same. And we can connect those points. And now we need to label which one is which. This is my f of x function, the parent function. And this is my h of x function. All right, so let's try this next one here. Miss Hannah graphed g of x and Miss Olivia graphed h of x. Hannah's function was g of x, which is equal to f of x plus 6. So we're going to label these. Obviously, this one is f of x. We can recognize it's the parent function. So which one would be Hannah's? If we did f of x plus 6, that gives us g of x. So which one shifted up 6 units? And it is, of course, the blue line. So this is g of x. So what is the equation for Miss Olivia's function? Well, it looks like it went from here and dropped down 8 units. So that's nothing more than the function f of x, and we take away 8. All right, so what happens if we're not doing it outside of the parentheses? We're doing it inside of the parentheses. Well, remember, we're still talking about a translation. We're translating it to the right or to the left. It says translated right here. So if we have this, so since inside the parentheses, 
uh, or outside of the parentheses has been a vertical translation, that leaves our only other option for it to be translated horizontally. And the weird thing is with the horizontal translations, you would think that, you know, adding would move to the right and subtracting would move to the left, but unfortunately it doesn't work that way. So with the plus C, what happens is the line will shift to the left that number of units, whatever C, the value of C is, and if I subtract C, that shifts it to the right that number of units. And I'm going to try to explain why. Hopefully you can wrap your mind around this by looking at the function f of x plus 2. So I have the parent function graphed here. So thinking about this, if I have the parent function, let's make us a quick little table for just the parent function. x and then I have f of x. Okay, so let's see. If x is negative 1, I get out, if I plug in a negative 1 for x, I get out a negative 1 for f of x. If I plug in a 0, I get out a 0. If I plug in a 1, I get out a 1. Okay, so let's think about then what happens if I add 2 to that function, to the x value, what do I then get out? So let's plug in some values here. If I plug in a negative 1, and then I add 2 to it, negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So if I plug in a negative 1, that gives me out the value as, as if I plugged in a 1, so it gives me out a 1. If I plugged in a 0, 0 plus 2 is 2, so if I plugged in a 2, we could keep on going here, I get out a 2. So when I plug in a 0 over here, since I had to add 2 to it, it's the same as if I plugged in a 2 here and got out a 2. If I plug in 1, if I plug in 1 plus 2 is 3, I get out a 3. So let's look at it. Negative 1, 1, 0, 2. Um, let's see here. 1, 3. And you can see the pattern would continue. I just keep on going up this way, and I'd keep on going down this direction. So let's see what happened here. When I added 2, it shifted it from the origin to the left two units. So describe how the function relates. Well, it shifts it to the left two units. So what can we um, assume is going to happen here? We can assume that it's going to shift to the right three units. So let's graph it. We start here. We go over three. We look at this point, go over 3. We look at this point, we go over 3. So the slope is still the same. It just shifted our graph to the right 3 units, just like we said. And if you wanted, you could draw the table out again and look at that 0, take away 3, would put me at what negative 3 got out. A negative 3 got out a negative 3. So when I plug in a 0, I get out negative 3. Excuse me. All right, so Kate graphed g of x and Mason graphed h of x. So let's label these. Of course, which one is f of x? If you said purple, you are correct. So which graph is Kate's? Red or blue? Red or blue? Minus 8. So we're going to pay attention to, because it's inside parentheses, we're going to pay attention to the horizontal translation. What happened to get from here to here? We subtracted 8. To get from here to here, we added 6. So we know this must be Kate's. So this must be Mason's. So to write Mason's function, he took f of x. And it's a horizontal translation. And we got over here to negative 6. So we could say we subtracted negative 6, which means we added 6 units. And there's our function. So Julie will graph f of x and a of x. And her a of x is equal to f of x minus 9. How will the slope of a of x compare to that of f of x? Well, we know that with the slope, the slopes will be the same. The slope doesn't change. And how will the x-intercepts compare? Well, the x-intercept of um, the f of x function is, of f of x, I can't type and talk at the same time, is 0. And for uh, a of x, we know that it's going to translate over 9 units to the right since it's subtracted 
intercepted by 9. So, so the x-intercept for a of x translates 9 units. We could just say of a of x is at 9 because the function translated 9 units to the right. All right, that's a wrap, guys. That takes care of our lesson. You have homework. It will be posted on Google Classroom. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Hopefully, I will see you at 2.